Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, I've just watched what I consider to be a very important fight. Vladimir Klitschko against Alex Lipe. And uh, let me just say, it's a dominant performance. I personally don't think I've seen Klitschko ever look better. Lipe is trying to pressure him. You know what they say, pressure bus pipes. Lipe is coming forward. Lipe is game. Klitschko, at times in this fight, is on his back foot. But let me just say, Klitschko's feet are remarkable. As you watch tapes of this fight, just look down at his feet. Understand, this is a big man. The knock on the Klitschko's, at least in my eyes, is that they're a little bit stiff in the ring, a little robotic. This is a big man, and here in this fight, he's very light on his feet. He's showing a lot of lateral movement, more lateral movement than I'm accustomed to seeing from Vladimir Klitschko. Also, he's a vet. He's experienced. So as he's moving around the ring, he never gets caught in a corner. There are times where he's backing up. But there's always room to back up too. He's the one circling Lipe who's coming forward trying to corner him. It is masterful. Let me point out too. Equally as masterful in this fight, and what makes it a great fight, is the referee Eddie Cotton, who deserves mention here. Now, unlike the Alexander Povetkin fight, where Klitschko kept putting a forearm on the back of Povetkin's neck, right? Think Ali Fraser too, right? Here, Klitschko gets his forearm on the back of Lipe's neck. There's a height discrepancy. Klitschko is much taller than Lipe by about half a foot. Klitschko puts his forearm on the back of Lipe's neck and Eddie Cotton diplomatically but firmly jumps in every time that happens. Right? This fight never slips into the wrestling match of Klitschko against Povetka. So what you have is Vladimir Klitschko faced with a guy who is determined to get inside, right, who's on his front foot. So what Klitschko does is Klitschko circles him, uses change of direction, right, it's lateral movement. Klitschko is shooting a jab, and then in my favorite round, the fourth round, Klitschko unleashes several right hands it's great stuff. The accuracy, the athleticism, the timing, it all has to be there. Lipe never gets an opportunity to get inside on Vladimir Klitschko. At one point, Lipe gets close and throws a big uppercut, but he's too far away. The uppercut misses Klitschko. Klitschko never gets hit hard with anything on the inside from Lipe, who quite frankly can't close the distance. Right, as Teddy Atlas likes to say when he does fights, Klitschko is charging a high price for the real estate between himself and Alex Lipe. Right, now let's talk about Klitschko's offensive game. First, let me say this. There's a foot speed gap in this fight. Right? Klitschko is faster foot speed wise than Lipe. Right? So Lipe comes in, he tries to do a Joe Fraser. He actually tries to bob. He's not just, you know, standing upright expecting to walk in. He's trying to be elusive. The problem, though, is that Klitschko jab. It's a pile driver, it's a two by four. Right? Lipe's trying to come in, then you see his head snapping back. Right? Repeatedly. That jabs like a fence around Klitschko. 
right? And of course, if you get sloppy in dodging that jab, then the right hand comes behind Klitschko, right? The uh, right hand follows the jab. So here is Lipe getting beaten up on the outside, unable to come inside. Even in a fight where the referee greatly reduced Klitschko's ability to clinch him. Right? So, just look at Klitschko's feet. Look at how Klitschko starts leading with straight right hands. In the fourth, let me just say too, that Klitschko doesn't go to the body that much. Okay, fair enough. Right? Klitschko's version of clinching is... Shorter guy is here. Klitschko puts a forearm and leans down on him. Doesn't give him a chance to come inside. Okay, fair enough. But let me tell you, that upper body attack of Klitschko's is so devastating. And the foot speed and timing is so devastating. And his reach is so lengthy that guys are going to have a hard time catching up with this guy. Right? Let me just say this, though. In my opinion, Lipe did a few things wrong, right? First, there's something in boxing called a foot faint, right? The taller guy knows you want to get inside. You know you want to get inside, right? But you've got to have the other guy guessing on when you're going to come inside. You can't always be on your front foot because then it becomes target practice. Right here, I didn't think Lipe did enough fainting to get inside. Also, and you saw this years ago, different generation, the Jimmy Young Ali fight. When you're fighting a guy who's having his way, hitting you on the way in, what you might want to do is to take a step back, force him to come forward. Now, unfortunately, that's not Lipe's game. Right? I believe that, you know, if you're going to beat Vladimir Klitschko, you really have to get him out of his rhythm. Right? He can't be perfecting that rhythm from start to finish. You have to change the script. Right? Lipe gets battered the first three rounds. I'm not saying on Lipe's back foot he necessarily would have been offensive, but I'll tell you what. Take a round off. Find a way to back up showboat a bit. Look like you're going to run in. Right? By time. You can't come in full bore 100%. Then at the end of the first round. And keep in mind, Lipe hits the canvas in the first round. He actually gets hit with a few stiff jabs. Loses his balance. Now, I'll agree. He doesn't look hurt on the canvas. But the point is, it's clear he ran into a pole as he was trying to get close to Vladimir Klitschko. You can't start a fight at 100% in the first round, then the second round you're at 80%, then the third round you're at 60%, then the fourth round you're at 40%. You see where this fight's going, right? Lipe needed to figure out ways to pace himself, right? What he might want to do, seriously, is look at some Bernard Hopkins films. You don't always have to be facing the guy. Why not turn and run away a bit? Right? It would have been interesting if instead of the full-born assault, if Lipe did incorporate a little bit of an ambush style. Right? David Hay, in an ambush style, went 12 rounds with Vladimir Klitschko. Here, you knew something was going to happen because Lipe is on his front foot and the bullets never stop flying in this match. This isn't the David Hay match where I know Hay got criticized for a lack of action. But that lack of action is by necessity. You need to pace yourself against Vladimir Klitschko. You know, there, there has to be truces during a fight where you know the other guy has punching power. Let me also applaud Vladimir Klitschko for the left hooks in this fight. They're masterful. While you're busy figuring out how to dodge his left jab, Vladimir Klitschko is also using his left hand to hit you very accurately with left hooks. What that does is it makes it almost impossible for you to block either. In other words, Klitschko's throwing a left jab. I have a hand up, right? I'm catching a left jab. My hand's here. 
suddenly here's the left hook. This part of my head's empty. And Klitschko makes it look the same. In other words, Klitschko standing up. He has a hand up. You don't know the angle. Is he going to come straight or is he going to come this way? And the problem is you can't just bend into his right hand because that will put you to sleep. So let me say this. Klitschko in his late 30s is getting better and better. I was impressed by Klitschko in the Tony Thompson rematch. Um, he's lifted his game even more here. Right? Look at the lateral movement. Look at his feet. The guy is moving an awful lot in the ring. It doesn't really look like it because he kind of slides around the ring. He's not up dancing. He's not, he's not a showman with the movement. Right? So he's not up dancing, doing a shuffle or stuff. That's not his style. Right? His style is more of the, I'm just going to move this way. Alex Lipe comes, misses me. Lipe tries to corner me this way. I'm going to move that, that way, make him eat some jabs. Right? He gets a little bit, you know, uh, cautious on the jab. I'll hit him with some left hooks and stuff like that. The movement is devastating. Let me close by saying this. There is a fight, the Lehman Brewster fight, the first one, where Vladimir Klitschko runs out of gas in the middle of the fight. What I enjoyed with this match was that Klitschko has to work from start to finish. He looks a little bit tired at the end of the match. Obviously, he's in better shape than Lipe, who, you know, the second knockdown, in fact, it's the third knockdown of the fight, the second knockdown of the round, Lipe's head hits the bottom rope, right? Obviously, Lipe's in worse shape than Klitschko at the end of this fight. But, Klitschko looks a little bit winded to me, right? The pace was in pants, right? If I'm one of these other elite heavyweights, I've got to think of ways to force Klitschko to work while I pace myself in the fight. Let me just add this too. Lipe didn't have the size to land his own jab, or the jab, to land on Vladimir Klitschko. Right? I would say that a Tyson Fury would. I get the feeling if you're going to fight Klitschko, you need the jab to deal with him from the outside, at least prevent him from coming forward and clinching you. You need the jab to deal with him from the outside. Then you need tactics when you get inside. For example, let's say you get inside and Klitschko's trying to bend you over and put a forearm on the back of your neck. Understand that forearm on the back of the neck saps your energy as much as a big time punch. Right? The back of the neck is really tender. Shane Mosley in interviews after the Floyd Mayweather fight. Believes he lost that fight because Mayweather leans on the back of his neck early on, draining him of energy. What you need to do is when you see Klitschko coming in with the forearm that he's going to put on the back of your neck, you need to somehow have a hand up here. You need to make it look like you just have a hand defending yourself. But that hand has to be up on Klitschko's face. Right? I mean... I know it's dirty boxing. Hey, it's a tough sport. Back in the days, they would call it lacing, right? You'd have laces on the gloves, and guys would literally put the glove up to lace you. But I really believe that you need to do something when a big man is leaning on the back of your neck, right? You have to make it look innocent, right? You have to make it look innocent, but when you come in, you almost have to have this hand here for no other reason than to push in Klitschko's face as he tries to lean up on you. So think about that as you're watching the Lipe fight. Lipe fought gallantly. This is one of the better challenges to Vladimir Klitschko. Obviously the copy box numbers are awful and Lipe didn't come close to beating Klitschko. But the effort's there. He's on his front foot trying to get inside. It takes Klitschko at his best and his game's improving 
to keep him outside. I don't think I've ever seen Vladimir Klitschko with this much lateral movement. And let me just point out the obvious. When you're moving laterally, you need accuracy. Right? You know, it's not just the movement that gets you space. It's the punches you're throwing. Check out Klitschko's accuracy. He's very accurate. Great performance. I thought it was really one of the more meaningful fights in Klitschko's career. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. I can see that Vladimir Klitschko has lifted his game of late. He's still not going to the body. He didn't really need to fight inside. You never see him shorten his punches. Right? Everything's a long jab, a left hook from distance, a straight right laser-like hand, right? You don't see him going like this and, you know, a guy's never leaning on his shoulder while Klitschko's punching to the solar plexus and stuff like that. That's not his game. But I will say he's such an elite athlete. He's one of the best athletes in the sport. And he moves so well and his timing is so tight. And his awareness of where he is in the ring so good that he almost never gets caught up on the ropes. And he makes you pay for the real estate between you and him. Right? If you don't make the most of the opportunity when you get inside before he clinches you, you're going to be out of luck. Right? The ref doesn't allow a wrestling match here. And what happens is a Klitschko masterful performance. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Great performance. Thanks for stopping by.